Now that is what's called sugar. Welcome into another episode of Weld.com. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to set up your stainless steel weld pipe test, get the perfect tax, the best purge, and prevent that nasty sugar. This isn't our first stainless steel video, so I know we talked about purging before, but I just wanna reiterate, if you don't already know, the act of purging is to push in argon or some form of inert gas and get rid of the atmosphere that's inside of our pipe or our tubing so that we can make a good, clean weld. Argon, unlike the air we breathe, is dense, it's heavy, so it settles at the bottom and usually fills up at the top. We wanna to try to find the lowest point in order to start the purge. Once all of that gets up, it pushes the atmosphere out, and then all we have left is the argon flowing out of our vent and now we're properly purged. How long does it take to actually purge? There's a formula that is taking the inside diameter of the pipe, multiplying it by four, and then multiply that by the length in feet. Divide your purge rate in CFH, and that'll equal the time in minutes it takes to actually purge. If you wanna get more into the theory of purging itself and the formulas and all that jazz, go hit up our friends at the American Welding Program. They've got some content for you to read up on if you wanna learn more about purging. But really, I think it's a little bit more simpler than that whenever we're working with coupons. It doesn't take that long to purge. We can just simply wait and we can actually feel it. As far as a longer situation, they have meters and air quality gauges that they'll actually measure the amount of argon that's in there compared to the other atmosphere gases. And when they get the green light, they start welding. The main reason why we're purging in the first place again is to keep the weld clean and prevent sugar. We're gonna put our couple penetrating tacks in here where we get full pin. If we don't get the proper purge, we're gonna get this nasty sugaring on the inside and that's usually a failed weld test. Or if you wanna put a bridge tack and avoid the purge in the tacking process, I'm gonna show you that too. So let's get started. Okay, so now it's time to tack our pipe. We've got a piece of three inch schedule 40. It's already prepped, ready to go. And I've actually have already got it taped up. I've got it sitting on a trough here. This is so that we get the right alignment. And as far as a gap in spacing in our pipe, I've got about a 532 second. At least that's what I'm going for. If you notice, I have tape on this end of the pipe. It's completely covered. And then I've got a hose ran on the inside of this pipe. Sometimes I like to take that hose and get some of the pressure off of it because sometimes it want to pull out if you're using just this cheap tape here. You do not need crazy expensive tape. You don't need crazy expensive purging equipment. All we need to do is block the gas. As far as your argon setup, we're needing two hoses, one to the TIG torch and one to the inside of the pipe. So you're gonna need to figure out how to get either two bottles, which is probably the most expensive setup, or you can get the cheapest setup, which is like a, a re regular setup with a Y, and then you can run two hoses off that. The problem with that is you're gonna be stealing from either your purge or your torch, and you're not gonna get an accurate reading on what flow you're actually having out of your torch or the inside of your pipe. For what I have, which is a dual flow regulator system, we can actually adjust and control our torch flow and our purge flow. The hose coming out of the other side that goes inside has no diffuser. It's just an open-ended hose, guys. And we got only one opening here. The tape on the bevel is completely covered on the bottom. The highest point right there is the only opening that I'm gonna have and it's gonna fill up this piece of pipe from the bottom all the way to the top and just kind of trickle out the top. And that's where I'll put my tack. Let's go ahead and turn the purge on and put our first penetrating tack in. There are a lot of ways of testing whether or not you've got a purge. We've running about 10 CFH for our hose here and I've got about 30 CFH on my torch. That's more than enough. I actually have more flow than I normally would use for this while I tack just for the fact in case there is a leak or a gap somewhere, this is more than enough gas. Right now I'm gonna show you the difference between a penetrating tack and a bridge tack. Really not doing a whole lot different than how I would do carbon steel. Get that first tack in, really let it wet in. I'm close to 70 amps, running the ESOB volt right now. We're not running off any batteries, we're running straight off the wall. I'm gonna hold our puddle over the center of it, make sure it's nice and fused and in there. And we'll pull off to the bevel edge. Now that we've got a pin, pin tack in, you can kind of take off your tape, look in there, make sure your tacks are purged. If you see sugar on the inside, you need to evaluate what you're doing and make sure you cut those tacks out and refit it, re-clean it, because again, if you get sugar in there, it's a failed weld test. We're gonna put a bridge tack right here real quick so I can at least show you that. The only thing we've done differently is we've turned our machine down from 70 to about 55. And we do not want to get to those bevel edges. We want to stay way higher up on this bevel edge. So we're going to try to puddle up. Again, we're at a colder amperage so that I don't mess this bevel up. I'm just trying to put a bunch of weld there at the top. Try not to go outside my bevel edges either. But the fact that I'm not working on the inside of that groove, 
I might get sugar on this tack, but it's gonna get completely removed and they're much easier to cut out if you choose to cut out your tacks as you weld and not leave a big burr on the inside of that bevel. Bridge tacks are a good alternative to be able to cut your tack out without leaving a burr, but still keep everything fit. And if you look, I don't have a single piece of tape on it. I don't have to waste time purging, waiting, taking the tape off, moving it, not getting a ground. If the QC will let me, I'm gonna, pur I'm gonna bridge tack every single time. Now the pipe's all tacked up. I did go ahead and cut that bridge tack out because again, I like to leave my bottom open. So that was the easiest tack that I could remove. So I went ahead and cut that out. I've tacked it in the 6G position on a piece of tubing, just like you might be if you were in welding school yourself. A lot of schools will have a hose, a separate hose on another regulator that you can run. First is stick that at the very bottom. I don't want to shove it all the way up next to the weld. You're going to have that blowing right against your root and you want it to be a little bit away from it if you can prevent it. The next thing I'm gonna do is tape it to my pole here. This is gonna take the weight of that hose off the tape. Now what you do have to be aware of is this is a open tube and that's open in there. So if there's a place for gas to come out, you will absolutely lose your purge. As for this part down here, tape close to that hose and then I'm just not gonna even let up on the tape. I'm just gonna keep it coming, baby. The tape is cheap compared to reworking a weld or losing a welding job. So for me, when it comes to taping, I'm not gonna skimp on it. I don't wanna feel leaks, see leaks, hear leaks. As for the top, I don't like having to remove the tape to look at my root progress. However, I do like looking at my root progress as I'm welding. So I'll put a clear lens that you would typically put in your welding hood. It's made out of polycarbonate. Holds up to heat pretty okay. Dedicate a welding lens to it, whatever. This is gonna save you so much time. We're gonna want a vent hole this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of 332 wire, the same wire I'm gonna root with. I'm just gonna pop a couple little holes here at the top so that we don't build up any pressure as we go about sealing this root in. I'm gonna likely do this side first up to this tack. That means I need my tape to come from like right here and then all the way around to this side. And we're gonna close this up, not leak out at the bottom and we want it all to vent out of the top. So we'll give it a second. And as we're ready to weld, we'll pull back the tape, the direction that we're welding. I like to kind of roll it back on itself so it doesn't stick to my glove, hopefully. And then we'll weld from the bottom up and the bottom up. Let's see if I can weld this with these cameras in the way. Now I would say we don't have any sugar on this route yet. But what I can tell you is we don't have enough argon in there. That means we need to either turn our purge rate up or we're having a leak somewhere either on the lower portion of it. Maybe we had too big of a stretch out here. So what we'll do is we'll just scoot this tape over a little bit over where we've already started to put a weld in. That should help. We'll purge it a little longer, make sure that it has enough gas, maybe add some more tape, whatever we got to do to try to make a better looking route. Since I've got that little bit of weld on that other side, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch to the other side. And I'm not going to open the window up as much. I'll put my hand over it and I do feel that argon coming out. So let's go ahead and try to run this bead. My apologies in advance, it's not easy to get an arc shot on a little piece of pipe. Now this tack I'm not gonna feather. We're gonna see if we can't fuse it okay. But this is why I always prefer to cut my tacks out with stainless. They can be a little bit more stubborn, especially if you don't feather them. All right, let's keep it rolling. I did feather that tie-in. I do prefer to feather my tacks. So the top tack at the very top of this joint, I've got feathered. On the side here, I feathered it as well. I'm gonna try to drop that heavy spot into my root, but we're just gonna keep on keeping on. I hate I wasn't able to get a lot of good arc shots in this video. Now there are a lot of techniques in order to put a stainless steel root in. They could dip, they could back feed, you could double dip, you could big dips. It doesn't matter. If you wanna see a video on this, I'd love to show you guys and try to get some better arc shots. But I think the biggest takeaway from this video is how to properly set up and purge your coupon along with doing these tie-ins, whether they be a bridge tack or a full pin tack and cutting those out. I think that's what's important. So we've got this whole side finished up. We didn't feather this tack and it shows. It's kind of clumped up, it's humped, it was stubborn and didn't want to move compared to the tack that I did on the top, which you can't see because we feathered it paper thin. For this tack on this side, I've already taken the liberty and just chopped it right through the center with the cutoff wheel because we're cutting it out. Cutting into that tack, 
just like it is, is a full pin tack leaves you a really deep burr into the pipe itself. You can get to that spot and you can melt your bevels and pull that little bit of burr into your puddle and it be just hunky dory. But if you miss it, now you have your weld and then a sharp bevel, sharp edge sitting right next to your weld and that's gonna show up on x-ray. So we got everything feathered. The top, the tacks cut out, the bottom started. Well, let's finish this route. Now I hope you guys understand that the main point of this video is not to show you how to necessarily put in a stainless steel root, but it is to show you how you are supposed to properly purge and tack it and feather your tacks at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the purge. Maybe we were cutting a tack off and the air from the grinder pushed in there and we just lit up and started welding. That could give you sugar. Maybe your purge stopped. Maybe it, the hose fell out. Maybe a hole did happen. Something happened where we lost our purge and I wanna show you what that looks like right here on this last little bit. Now that is what's called sugar. It's pretty obvious that it's there. You can kind of tell when it starts to set in on your root pass as your root should have some colors or hues to it. If perfectly purged, you should have a nice silver color to it. We've got the sugar, of course, on top and that not a good tie-in down there on bottom. Again, this video was to teach you how to purge and avoid those tacks. As you get to them, feather those tacks paper thin. If you can do bridge tacks, do those. Then you don't have to worry about any of those burrs or anything in there or having too heavy of a lump that you didn't bother tying into. Take a look down in the description below. We've got our partners like Esob, Heavy Hitters TIG Rigs, Outlaw Leather, Ariat FR, and we'll see y'all in the next weld.